Hello guys, it is Ryan for the Elite Pigeon Auctions. We are at the lofts of Bosman and Lincolns. That's right. Bosman and Lincolns, there is Dirk Lincolns. The young pigeons coming out. Dirk, how are you today? Everything okay till now. <laughs> the famous Dirk Leakins. Mm. Famous auctioneer, super pigeon flying here though. Super, super flying. Dirk, introduce yourself a little bit so the people uh, get to know you. Yes, what can I say? I'm already, I have my, mem my, my card, my member card from the KBDB. I have more than 50 years, so uh, I'm uh, 64 years old. Uh, before I, uh, I raised an ass and uh, it was very good, but I thought this position in uh, the province is, is better. So in, uh, we started here in 2012, started breeding and in 2013 here together with, uh, with partner Mark Bosmans, uh, we started here racing and it was very good. Last uh, 12 years, I think 12, uh, five national races we won. The biggest one, Brief, Chateau, Argenton, uh, Chateau again, and I forget the other one, uh, the Giret. All 600 kilometer races, five, 600 kilometers, so national KBDB races. So uh, that was in my eyes the most important win, uh, thing to win um, races like that because it's uh, obvious, it's, it's the, the, the best uh, in Belgium what you can win, that's national KBDB race. We won about uh, 27 provincials here in this uh, loft, and I won already 13 in, in, in us and 13 provincial and uh, first national race in us as well. And uh, so it went well. We have uh, a few Olympiade birds. And for people wondering, the, 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 the bloodlines of your pigeons. It's, it's very easy to say. Uh, we have the old line, looky look line. That's Schellens, the grizzle line. Schellens, Huiskes van Riel, but uh, most most was Schellens, Louis de Luz in that grizzle, looky look. And then we have the super mama from Pros Rosen, and then we have the cannibal, the two children direct of cannibal in the foundation of our loft. And uh, the Olympic triple from Etienne Stasse we brought in. We bought, I bought him in 2012 when he won uh, the title of a provincial winner, provincial ice pigeon, and then he also won the title of Olympia Hadebert, and, and I bought it before they had to, uh, he had that title. But that was the best move we ever did. And another uh, very important bird, one bird only was uh, the Black Mama. It was coming from uh, an auction, and the background from Black Mama is uh, Theo Gilbert, the Panthers. The Black Panthers, that's the background from uh, that bird and still coming back, um, always in those black birds here. Also uh, the OT is a grandchild from Black Mama, Nena, uh, the Olympic bird. OT was the first national winner from Chateau against uh, 14,000. And uh, Nina was an Olympiade bird coming direct from Black Mama. But also all over the world, I hear very good results uh, from that black mama, always inside the pedigrees. But we have four or five lines, not more, and we keep them. We keep them this way. And the other uh, thing I wanted to mention is your pigeons have very good success wherever they go. Mm -hmm. People purchase pigeons mm -hmm. for good money, and they're getting big results. Mm -hmm. I know this here, here, just a few weeks ago, mm -hmm. you were in China. Yes, I was invited by the Chinese guy who bought all our old birds last year. We sold all the old birds, except the one from uh, 23, of course, last year. And then a few from 22 we bought back in the auctions because we know already that the birds were sold to China. And he asked me uh, to how the, pair, the, the, the birds were paired up here. And uh, I gave him the list how they were paired up, and they went three times. They were uh, transported and three times to to China, and he kept them together the pairs, and he bred some pairs. Uh, he bred some pairs of youngsters, and he put them in the famous Pioneer race, and that was April. That was already late because they have to race uh, uh, six months later. They have to race. Uh, 
four times 500 plus kilometer. So paired up in, in, in April, then you need another two months to come up and then to, so the, in June they only go to that loft. And uh, one of those youngsters won the most prestigious title over there, the Golden Eagle. That was the Ace Pigeons. They started from almost 10,000 and she was the Ace Pigeon all over those four races. Those were four races above 500 kilometers in 20 days. So that was super. Eh? So four races? In 20 days from more than 500 kilometers. And each race is just over 500, 500 kilometers? 550, about that. 10,000 pigeons 10, start, start the competition. Yeah, start the competition. So yeah. you would have to say that those birds that were there representing uh, of your bloodlines mm. were only uh, very, very young. Probably the youngest in, in the they race. They were very young. They were very young. But they came from the couples like we, we coupled them. There was another uh, ace pigeon in another one loft race. But the Pioneer Club is the most prestigious race in China. Eh? Those are the big races with the big money. Yeah? So they won, won a lot of money with those birds. Eh? So he was so happy and he invited me and he said, uh, please come and select uh, the 22 birds you didn't select before you go. So I was uh, there and uh, I selected the 22 birds. The other ones were selected already, the old birds and the breeders. And I said, okay, this I like for breeding, this I don't like for breeding. And uh, they do whatever they like with them. But they were very pleased to have me there. And I was also very pleased to be there, of course. And that's good for our name in China. But okay, we don't need to sell birds anymore. We had our sale last year. Now we're going to enjoy the sport. Eh? And if somebody likes a bird. But we're not the big sellers. We never were. We only uh, sold some birds to... Uh, to cover the expenses. And um, you know, when you have a loft like this, it costs a lot of money eh? to go to the national races, a lot of money, it's more than a hobby. And uh, if you can uh, sell some birds to recover those expenses, then it's okay for us. Mark is retired, I'm retired. We don't need uh, too much uh, in our head, so uh, it's okay. So now we're coming up uh, to the start of old bird season. Mm -hmm. And you guys play the, the yearlings, the old birds, mm -hmm. and now this, are, this is a new group, a new yearling group. A new yearling group. Uh, only yearlings. We only had. yearlings. We had them last year as a youngster, so we were, of course, we were very curious to, to know what they are going to do eh, in, in, in the races, but uh, they were very good at the end of the year. Sometimes we won first 15 in the club and the first five in the, in the, in the interclubs. So uh, they, are, they did very well, those young birds. So, uh, talking about, okay, so let's talk, let, let's start then with, with the young birds, or you, we want to talk old birds. Well, you know what, maybe let's stick with old birds here for a moment. What's the system you guys are flying your old birds? Normally we do always uh, widowhood. The partner stays at home. There's always partners at home. There's always partners at home. But now also this year we have one loft total widowhood. Those are 12 hens and 12 cocks. They were uh, born in the middle of the summer last year, but we trained them very well last year, so they were selected. So one group, uh, total widowhood, 12 hens, 12 cocks. Then we have uh, another 24 cocks or 22 cocks on widowhood, classic widowhood, with old hands always here. And then we have 43 yearling hens. And they are paired up with, uh, with two, cocks, uh, two lofts of cocks, so 24 cocks about. So no matter what, when the cocks or the hens come home that you're racing, mm -hmm. they're always coming home to someone. Yeah, yeah there's always some, something to do. Always. Always something in the hall. Uh, they can eat, they can drink, but they also, they also see the other partners from the other, but, but in the short distance it's not a problem. The most of the time they come together or in a very short notice there are some birds here. So uh, there's always something uh, going on in the loft. And then, okay, that's the system everybody knows, eh? the, the, the classic widowhood. The partners are there, eh? they will find their partner. Eh? So you, there's always somebody home mm. uh, f for them when they return. Mm -hmm. Do you do this? Uh, on any time you train them in the car? Uh, we do that. Uh, when we train them in the car, there will always be something home. They know when they go in the car that there will something happen. Not that they go with the car and they only find the loft empty. 
So every time they go in the car, yeah. they know when they come home, there's going to be some type of a little party going on. Yes, but, but the old birds, we only do four or five times in the car, 15 mm -hmm. kilometer, 10 kilometer, 15 kilometer, 30, and then two times 40, and now they go with the club. So we don't drive with the car anymore. Between races, we never do with old birds because they know what's going on and they don't need that. With young birds, that difference. You have to always remind a young bird. You have to uh, tell it, do, do it again and again and again so they learn it. But old birds, yearling birds, they know the system. They had that already so many times last year. So now only a few with the car, training tosses, and then Wednesday with the club, 75, Saturday, almost 100 kilometer and then they are then you can then they are gone they are on the road eh? so then, you can keep them a week at home it's no problem and and these uh these yearlings you have now they're separated obviously the cocks from the hens every day they exercise out every day yes for law fly yeah, yeah law fly. Is, uh, the law same fly. same time every day roughly yeah about yes uh, the first uh, always separate the hens and the cocks separated eh? but um, there's one loft training very well now because they are already a long time uh, 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 separated separated uh, uh, with each other with the hens and they train very good but the hens also they're 43, eh? they go, eh? they, 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 when you let them out, they're gone. Eh? They come back in a half hour or 40 minutes or something like that. I know we talked about this morning, we were having a coffee. You said you have a, a group of cocks. Uh, you let them out yesterday or, or the day before. Mm -hmm. They're gone 52 yeah. minutes. You don't see them around. Yeah. You like to see this. No, they are gone. So I, I didn't see that before, but this group of youngsters, that specific group of youngsters, those 12 cocks are on total widowhood, they did that also last year. So when you let them out, though, that time they were still together with the hands, but they were very young. But when we let them out, they were always training. So I think that's in there a little bit in their system, what they learned as a young bird. So normally when you let out the widowhood cooks, they stay most of the time, they stay around. But, and they go and they come back and they go again. But this is a group, they go. So, Ask me again next month, I will tell you. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, another, any, uh, some more questions I have for you. With the, the old birds, how, uh, when do you expect to see them, this group of pigeons, where do you really want to see them shine? In the national races? No, these ones are not going, yeah, a few will go to the nationals. But these yearlings, uh, they will go normally to the middle distance races. We, we go, you know, farther and farther, right? that's the system here in our province. But once in the middle of the season in June, July, they will also go to the national races when it's okay. But we have one group, those are 12, 11 cocks and uh, three or four hens. They had, last year they had four, the four national races, they did the four national races. So they are very experienced in the national races. So this group, specific group of 14, 15, will go to the Bush National, the first Bush National, and they will go to the national races. But the other ones are an experience. So I want to, to learn them uh, uh, to, to do the, the, long, uh, the, the middle distance races, the provincial races with big groups. There are more than 10,000 birds. So once they have uh, four or five from these provincial races, 450 kilometer, they will be ready also to go to the, to the national. And, and so what you're saying is the difference between the provincial races mm -hmm. and the nationals. Provincials, you're looking anywhere from six to 10,000 pigeons. Yeah, yeah. And a national, you're looking 40, at? 40,000. Uh, 40,000. 40, 50,000 sometimes. I mean, it's real good, 50,000. Uh. Uh, you have the yearlings and the old birds. Uh. When you have a good preparation in the, in, now in spring, there will be a lot of birds in the first national bush. Uh. But okay, 30, 40, 50,000, the most, uh, the, that's, a little bit different than a provincial race, eh? you know, Belgium, how much is it? I think about 250 kilometer wide, eh? mm -hmm. so they release them in bush and then goes 250 kilometer. There to Norman, you mm. were there, yes. that's, that's the seaside and we are on the, the east side of Belgium, eh? so that's a different, eh? so they have to learn to fly alone. But you know, when the wind is east or south, they will be in the Flanders. When the wind is west or southwest, probably they will be here in Limburg. So we will see, we will wait and see. When we have the good wind, we go to the national races. When we have the bad wind, we don't go, we stay in the provincial races. We don't have a chance. You learn them to fly to the Flanders and then come back. That's not good, eh? 
they, when they go that way and they have to, not that they go with those birds to the Flanders, but they go that direction and then they have to make a big bow and you're always an half an hour too late. And that's, I don't want to teach the birds that. Okay, it all makes sense for, for, for the racing. So you plan out what you're gonna do. You, get, you, you make sure before a national race of that number of magnitude of pigeons that you give the, the birds the education. Mm -hmm. A little bit of, yeah. you don't just throw them to the wolves no, per se. No. Question with these pigeons, these yearlings, what type of uh, medications oh, do you use with them? None, most of the time, none medication. They have the yellow drops in the beak every week against uh, trico and a little bit uh, disinfect as well for respiratory. But uh, our birds are not used to, to get many, that's the best medicine, you see? You can film it there, there that just Mark gave it just, you know, oh, come on. what that is? I told you already in the winter, eh? Yeah, don't go too close, then they don't eat it. <laughs> it's kale. You, and you give them, you give the stock birds. Th that's the whole winter they receive that, but also now they still receive that kale, eh, Mark? Eh? But uh, it's better than medicine. So you give them kale, how many times a week? In a kale, eh? one time, one time a week. In the winter, every every week. Every week, and, and the birds, uh, they like it, eh? Yeah, they like it. And the, the race birds, you give it to them as well? Yes, also, but now we're finished, I think. Eh? And now it's finished eh? because now they have good food. They have, uh, we, we food the revolution, everything is inside. We learn to, they must learn to eat that and they must learn to eat whatever is, uh, whatever Mark gives them. Eh? But uh, he will explain that to you with how he feeds eh? So. Uh, He's the it, Mark is the is the feeding man, eh? The manager of the loft, eh? He, so he, he trains them. Eh? So Mark, you yeah, that's okay. No, he can just stay beside you if that's good. Mark, what's the, the system of feeding the yearlings? How are you, how are you going to feed? The yearlings we give now the new mangling farm for robots is uh, the revolution, mm -hmm. and it's now it's uh, this moment is the sport light. It's a very light mangling. And uh, you know, it's a very good system. And when we play the middle long distance, then we give uh, also the revolution, but the, the Sport Pro, it's uh, more fat in, in, in the feet. So a little more fatty. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so you're using the revolution mix. Are you adding anything, anything to it, uh, peanuts to it, anything? Uh, uh, Just the revolution? Yes. And that's the mix you stick with the whole season. No, you give some the, the fat food that we uh, give. Also eh? the fat food. When uh, they go far, right? When they go five, six hundred, they, yeah, they so you give the thirty-five. Yes, yeah, eh? so we give also the, the top energy. Uh, it's, it's more, a little bit more fat than uh, the Sport uh, Ultra. And, and everything is is Van Robys. Um, when the birds return from the races, anything in the water special? Uh, yes, also uh, then then we give hype in the water. Hype is, uh, what's that, Derek? Is That's electrolyte. Yes, electrolyte. Sugar electrolyte. So electrolytes in the water when they return. Yes. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Uh, no, and on the feet, then we give a, a dark conditioner. Intestines for the, 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 the For the intestines? Yeah, yeah intestines, yeah. Okay. Uh, on, on the food, so. And, and do you, you switch to a lighter mix at the beginning of the week? Go light to heavy or all the same? No, no, go light to heavy. When they come back, they're still heavy. And then at Monday, we start to give them light food. But most of the time you have two weeks. But we have one week, you only give one day light because Tuesday you have to give, a, uh, they go on Thursday, so. You don't have the time, but when we have two weeks between two nationals, you can make it a little bit, uh, first week some light, and then he goes over to some heavy food. Okay, now uh, when you're racing, uh, if the birds have a tough week, or, or birds come back late, uh, do you give them a week off, or do the birds have to play every week? No, uh, depends how they look, eh? but when they come back next day, eh, they will not, for sure, they will not go to the race. You can put them on Saturday race mm -hmm. to show distance, short distance yeah. because when they here on the loft, eh, eh, they ruin everything. Eh? You know that, that they are the boss. Eh? No, no, no. They will go to another small race, short distance race. So no matter what, they go to a small distance. Or they must be broken, eh? you know. Yeah. They're tired and then they go, then you close them up and they're in their cellar when the birds uh, are on the road. Eh? 
because they sometimes they are from Wednesday or from Thursday on the road. And what you mean is if you leave, uh, for people that don't understand, if you leave a pigeon home mm -hmm. and you don't lock him up in his box or, or keep him calm, mm -hmm. he becomes, it changes the atmosphere in the loft, correct? Of course, he will be the boss. Eh? And when the other birds come back from the race, they are tired, and he will, he will take their cells. Eh? Yeah. You cannot do that. Cock, eh? especially. Cock. cock. And it's no problem. But a cock, you must. Yeah, it's better that you all remove them from the loft, put them in the aviary for a few days, and then, then Saturday, when the others come back, you can also put them there and give them the partner. Mm -hmm. But you have to think about that a little bit eh, when you do some things like that. So you ha you're using a bit of common sense. You yeah. see, you don't you don't want that cockbird to dominate no, no, and, no. And, and, and and steal and push yeah. and, and bully. Yeah, yeah. A lot of common sense. I was going to ask, can we see the cocks? Can we see the old birds yes. Is, or the yearlings? Yep. Go in here. Is it on date now? <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Lab. That's second round of youngsters here. Yeah, they look they look beautiful. And how how uh, how much time out here will you give them? Wow, Mark stays with them, eh? But I hope the the hog is not coming now. Then we have a big problem, eh? Because and this is see? what this is your what yeah. round would this be? That's the second round. But they are also too fat, eh, you see? Oh Open yeah. Open the bake. That's because they have no condition yet, eh? And in a few days they must go up huh? and uh, get rid of the fat. See, they are flying already, yeah. some of them. You don't but push we them? Weaned, we weaned 10 days ago the last one, so you cannot push. They will go in a few weeks, they, uh, they go in the air, uh, they go. The first round they go, uh, that's no problem, they train for 45 minutes and we start to training them already, put, put them in the, in the baskets. Uh, but these ones, they will be going in the in the air uh, in a week of two, three. With these, uh, we're going to look at the yearlings here in a moment. But with these young pigeons, uh, before you put them in the car, how long do you like to see them exercising for? They must go away from the loft before you put them in the car, huh, Mark? Mm -hmm. They must, uh, they must out of sight. They must go out of sight in half an hour. So when you let them out. They go for a fly, they're flying just around the law for, no. for half an hour. That's not ready. No. No, no. You have to see them disappear for yeah. 25, 30 minutes and then yeah. come back over yeah. and look like they're someone else's bird. They look like yeah. they're racing mm -hmm. across the sky. Mm -hmm. That's when you're going to put them into the basket. Mm -hmm. yes. So it's not really on a clock, it's how they look. Yeah. So but he will put them already in the basket now. Eh? They stay overnight in the baskets already eh? a few times. They know about the they are not nervous. Eh? Spend the night, spend an yeah. evening in the basket. They yeah. drink in the basket already? You're teaching no, them? No, not now. Uh, not they not will... now, but uh, we train uh, over one week, then we start. Mm -hmm. You can you drink a uh, little learn in, in the basket. Okay. Mm -hmm. Makes it, sense. It makes sense. You, <laughs> you guys are very uh, methodical. Yeah, everybody. You guys are quite every, the team. Every good loft does that the way. If they don't do that, they are not a good loft. Guys, we are with Bosman and Leakins. Okay, mm -hmm. so what do we have here? Th yearlings. This is yearlings. That's, that's the yearling section on the total widow hood. Now the hens are already back. We just trained them. These are the yearling cocks. And I just come in so the light, uh, yeah, the camera picks it up. That's perfect. So each cock has his box. Yeah. And you have the grates. How often do you clean out, clean them out? So how often do you scrape the boxes? One, one time in a week. Uh, you know, we clean, you? When you see we the basket in, then we clean. Uh... A very, oh, very nice setup, eh? You lose a, I take it if you lose a cock, you close the box. Yes. Yes. He can hear off me too, so it's okay. And these guys here, they're gonna see, when will they see the hens? They come back together with the hens. Eh? The, this is total widowhood. These are 12 cocks and 12 hens, and they will do the fast, the short distance and the middle distance races. This ones. They are not going to the nationals. Uh, before it's, uh, I think, when's July, is eh, Mark? Eh? July, yeah, bush, bush of the young birds. Then maybe they will go uh, for a national race. But when they are good on the short and the middle distance, they will stay there. So these, yeah, so this is a little different family of pigeons. Yeah, there are a few ones between them. They are also uh, 
longer distance races, they will maybe we take them. We never show them a hand before they go. So when they go to a race, we give them a ball and we put them in the race. Some of them will go on Wednesday and we close the cell. But they all only come back on Saturday, all of them. So there will be no problem. And uh, the question is, before they go to the race, you'll open the box up, let them go in the bowl? No, 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 no nothing. No, Just no. put them in the basket the yeah. way they are yeah. and send them. When they come yeah. home, that's they, when the party they, is. Yeah, yeah. So there, there's no uh, firing them up no, before? No, no, because it's short distance. And when they're back winter, they end in Holland. Eh? And then they have to come back eh, when they are crazy. Eh? You know what I mean? Eh? They are too excited and then they go and they go and they stay. And then they have to come back again against the wind. Eh? That's right. So you don't want them? No, no, no. Let them do whatever they like. Let them do whatever they like. So these are the cocks for the for more more of the sprint yeah, races. Yeah. What's uh, what's sort of the base family of these pigeons? Uh, these are also our birds, but we have a, we bought last year. We bought a complete loft from Mike van Brabant, and he was a famous sprint racer here in our club. Eh? And he, he stopped the sport, and we bought the whole loft, the complete loft. And here are a few from these races are uh, from Mike van Brabant's bloodline. Those are fast ones, but they can also do the nationals because uh, the background from these birds is uh, Roger Engel. And Roger Engel was very famous in Belgium. He had the national ace pigeon, uh, KBDB races, long uh, 5600, and he was also a champion in Belgium. So these birds are normally also for uh, national races, but this guy, Mike van Brabant, he keep Mike van Brabant, he keep them only on the short distance because he mixed them up with some short distance races, like the red one, a short distance racer. But they can also do middle distance. Okay, so so it's just it's a very sim simple system. You fly with these guys, yeah. and these are the guys you're talking about that really fly. Mm. When you let them out, they just disappear. Yeah, they go directly. I saw it on Saturday, Mark let them out, eh? and I said, what time is let the birds out? I look at my watch, I said, they're all, they're now there are 52 minutes gone, and then I saw them <laughs> coming. Uh, after 52 minutes, I never forget that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the health? That's crazy, yeah, for, 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 for Cox. The health is, is super nice on these pigeons. You see, very calm, mm -hmm. they're not nervous. Yeah. And again, they're not used to a camera being in here, so it's a little, uh, it's they're different. Afraid. No. They will eat your camera when you do two times. When you come two times a week here, they will eat your camera. Eat your camera. <laughs> they will sit on your camera. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, and then further down in this loft, let you me just... Close this one. Yeah. yeah. You close that one. You, maybe you come here, from here. Better this way? Okay. And they go out always through the windows here, eh? Yeah. No, they come, uh, they go out through yeah. these windows. Uh, these are uh, also cocks for middle distance. Here are a few from Eddie Hansen inside. Very good ones. Very promising birds. That one for sure, that's fast Eddie, I call him. You know, the, the, the pied blue. Yeah. And he had, last year we had already four times one per hundred in the first one, uh, first percent, you know? Yes. I mean, not one, ten, one hundred. So, that was a wrong race, it was not the correct distance or it was already with the national ace pigeons last year. So, uh, middle distance and those are real old hens. They are, they are most of the time breeding hens, but we didn't send them to China because they were too old, you understand? So Too old meaning? Yeah, they were 10 years old. Eh? And birds who don't lay eggs anymore, but we keep them. Like that hen, we, put, we give them an egg and they start breeding. But I like to give those young cocks a very old hen. Why is this? They, they, they are so calm and they, those old hens, they know everything. Yeah? They know the system, they know how to treat the young guys when they come at home. Uh, when you have a young hen, they don't know what's happening, but they know what's happening, these old hens. There are so, hens so from 11 uh, between them. So you're using the old hens that know the system to, yeah. to calm the cocks and mm. teach them? Yeah. And keep everything... Uh, I never kill an old hen. The no. All the old hens, they don't lay eggs anymore. I keep them especially for the for the, the widowed cocks. Because when at, at day eight, you give them an egg, they start breeding. It's nothing so easy like that. No. If you have them young hens, they are still going after the young hen. After two weeks, they are still going, 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 and they stay going. Eh? But you at the eighth day, you, you give them a plastic egg and they start breeding. So it's very easy. 
and I find that it, it, it's easier to pair young cocks to old hens. I think so. And they know these 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 are the hens always sitting in that in that cell. We will always keep the same hand for the same hell, uh, uh, cell. If, if th that cock is gone at the end of the year, there will be a replacement. There will be, that hand will be still in that, in that cell. So we couple them in the end of the, uh, in September and they, these, these hands are now this lot. The, the, the hen always keeps the same box. Yeah, yeah. Just the cock, a new cock it's added. Them, eh? They had already after the season, they had uh, breeding for 25 days. They stay on the nest. Those cocks, as young birds, they don't know what's happening. Eh? That's a very easy system. Man. A very good system. Yeah. And you, you, you see here, I, I just see in, in both sections, mm -hmm. everyone is understanding what's going on. Yeah. There's no uh, weirdo, nobody no, saying, hey, no, no. what's, what, no, no what's crazy, happening? No crazy birds inside. No crazy birds. And so these hens are always here. Yeah. And you have over further down, you have cocks that are always home. Yeah. And is it always old cocks? Old cocks also, same same style. Old same cocks. style, just and, it's reversed. And they uh, we couple them, and we couple them with, uh, they don't go together, but they stay after, uh, behind the, how do you say, that, yeah. thing, that thing. Yeah, they, they stay, in, I know, they go in the back yeah, of the box. the back of the box, and, and, and they, they pair up with each other through the, the how do you say? So you put the, so you put the cocks in the the old cocks. No, no, no. The hands we put in the back. In the back. And the cocks stay know their box. Yeah. So the cocks pair through. Yeah. This way, there's no too aggressiveness. No. And it's it's romance fight. slowly. And they start kissing eh? and they lay to each other. And I think that's the best way for young birds. Uh, they must uh, just be in love. Just be in love. That's more than enough. And do, do the uh, yearling hens have they gone down on eggs? No. 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 Not one. That uh, only in the total bit of they were coupled, they, they had eggs. Okay. Yeah. And because they know each other. Eh? So the, these cocks here with the old hens, you let them go down on eggs. Yeah, on eggs. Yeah. Now, why is that? Why not Just the hens? To, to, uh, they were here already in, in September and uh, they have the nest already here because they, they want, I want them to keep their cells. That's mm -hmm. their cell. And the only way you can do that is to have a nest. But for the hens, it's not a problem. They don't come for for the they co they don't come home for the cell. The cocks they come home for territory, mm -hmm. and the hens they come home for the cock, for the for their lover. You understand? It's not important where they are. They will go with the, that. We put them there, and it's no problem. But it's very easy. But these cocks, they must have their territory. They must. Nobody can go in there, eh? and they fight a little bit with each other. But the hens they don't do that. They don't need that. So it, it's quite a system, and these old hens, they won't go outside at all? No, no, no. they always stay. So when you let the cocks out, the cocks get to come into the hallway, yeah. then all the cocks go out. Mm -hmm. I see you have sliding doors yeah. through here, so you keep all the cocks yeah. together. Mm -hmm. And 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 these cocks will come in, they see their hens. Now, when will you take these hens away, these old hens? Uh, now, when they're breeding, eh? you mean, eh? in a few days, when they are 10 days breeding, we take the hens away. And the cocks stay on the nest till day after, then they, they walk away from the nest. Eh? They leave and the then eggs. they are with the hood. Then and the with. first time they come home, they find their hands again. So the weekend, we do it. Normally we do that on Sunday, and then Monday they are gone from the nest, and then they start looking for the hands. You know that. Eh? But we we go we go with them to the race on Friday. We bask them on Saturday. They will find the hands. Also half bucket. You know where they will find them behind them. And, and will they get to go in with the hand or no? Just sit out, sit in front. To them, and you, they can have them. They can have them. They can have them. Time, yeah. Okay. But so they will sit in the front that they are calm down. Huh? So until they calm down, how long will you give them to calm down? So they can eat and they can drink a little bit. Huh? When they go huh, there, huh? but most of the time they stay here. And or when they are there, they can go and eat a little bit, and they go down and drink a little bit, and they go to their hand. It depends. Huh? It depends. Yeah. So it's it's all everything still is like yeah. a feeling, yeah. like you're like yeah. you're like yeah. you're cooking. Yeah, you're always watching the birds. Yeah, but they they cannot go with the hen if they are not uh, if they don't drink a little. They have to drink a little bit eh? because they are hyd hydrated. How do you say? Yeah, you want them yeah. to hydrate. Yeah. yeah, you want them to rehydrate yeah. themselves yeah. from from yeah. from the race. Mm -hmm. And that they do, eh? they will they will not eat maybe, but they will drink for sure. And they go and they see their hands and then we, we put them together, uh, let's say for an half an hour and then it's finished. Okay, and these these birds here, uh, how long will you give them then with the hens? 
How long will you leave them on the uh, after the first race? It depends. Not so long. Maybe. It depends. It's, it's, it, that, that, I don't count that. Maybe an half hour, maybe an hour when we have time, when the birds are back, when the last one's coming, when it's a difficult race. But with, the fa with these fast races, short distance races, we just leave them for an half an hour. When, that's why we leave them half. And when we see they're all here, then they can go and then have some fun with them. So you give them anywhere between a half hour, maybe to an hour and a half, to take them away. Yeah, but it's, it's not necessary for the cocks. You see, they're fighting, and that's what, what, the, what you need at the territory. But it's, they just go for the hen, and even when it's half buck, eh, they go with the hen, and they kiss with the hen, and they do like this more than enough. They don't need more. When you are tired from your work, eh, you don't jump on your wife. Eh? You wait a little bit, you eat a little bit, take a bath, uh, go on, and then you... Yeah, and it. then she puts you on the couch and you fall asleep. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> okay. I mean, it's a very common sense, the system, eh? It's the same. It's, it's, it's very easy. Don't look so far. You, there are only two, two kinds of birds, bad birds and good birds. For the rest, is all bullshit. For the rest, is all bullshit yeah. from Dirk Leakins, Bosman and Leakins, guys. You are in the loft. Mark, come inside. <laughs> And every, every section is the same, eh? Every section is the same. These are the national races. Okay. These, these guys were, uh, f they did four nationals. So last year they did Bush, Argenton, uh, Chateau, Chateau, something, of, or two times Bush. Four races, four. There were only four, they did them all. Okay, so four national races. Mm -hmm. This, uh, and they did this as young birds. Yeah. So they would be competing against how many thousand pigeons roughly wow. per race? The last race were 15, 16,000. Eh? And the first race are about 30, bush, 30,000. Okay. But last year it was not so much because it was hot weather. But okay, let's say bush between 20 and, and 40,000, if it's, it's a lot. And then you have these old birds as well, uh, they're racing with uh, at bush, so about 50,000 altogether. But they learned how to, to, to lease together with the birds of the Flanders. So they have to go out of, out of that. They have group. to break. They have to break. And, and these four national races, for people understanding, mm -hmm. uh, what are roughly the distance, the Five, shortest? 500 kilometers is the shortest. 500. Oh. And you have Chateau, it's 540 kilometer. Mm -hmm. And then you have, uh, th that was the longest, because Argenton, 570, 575. That's the longest. This year they're going to have an extra one, La Souterraine, at 610 kilometer. So there, anywhere for people wondering uh, in miles, you're looking between 300 and 400 mile yeah, races yeah, for yeah. young birds. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And these pigeons have all done this. These are, they, they, they have all done this. They, uh, we, we, th these are the leftovers. We, we had 17, I think. I took five out. They were in my eyes not good enough or they come back next day or things about they started with 17 and i think they they were with 12 and when we finished 12 or 13. so certain things you're looking for when you're selecting off the race team for pigeons to move to the next season yeah. so your young birds for instance you have them out here they're playing mm -hmm. they're going to race mm -hmm. at the end of the season what makes your selection uh, look at the results and uh, there are a few inside, there are four on, on the four national races, four times in the prizes. I think that's okay. Mm -hmm. But uh, they have to be for sure two times in the, in the prizes. To move on from the first four prizes, because it's difficult. Eh? Sometimes you have a complete different wind and they are sitting in the east side of Belgium than in the west side of Belgium. But that experience, that's more than enough. I don't need to, they don't need to, the last race, it was a very hard race, it was very hot, it was a Chateau, really, uh, every, the cloud, it was more than 30 degrees, that was very hot, eh? and we started with the first in the club, and we have, I think, 10 out of, uh, 10 out of 13 or 14 in the prizes, so they did very well, and they were all, they were all very fresh when they arrived, so that was, for me, the most important thing. They were all, m almost all in the prizes, one was in the morning, it was still open, eh? the, the race. It was not finished, one on four, eh? the race, the, you know, the prizes are yeah, yeah, yeah. first 25%. It was still open here in our province. So we took in the morning, uh, very, it was still dark. Eh? We, we, we all leave number, uh, there, were leave, no, there was number 11. And uh, so that's a team, these 11 birds, I think they had all prize on that last shot or so. That's that's good thing to know that they they want to be home. They come home. 
so the selections, you, you, you're selecting very hard. Yeah. That was the first one on Chatur who makes the first in the club on the seventh of the province. But the, 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 you know what the thing is, this was the first round of youngsters from 2023. And in the first round of youngsters, we took out 50 birds out of 120. We took out to put to the breeding lot because we sold all our old birds. So we need to have, from all the best birds, there was not a child inside. They are all in the breeding lot. Ah. So these are... So you were, yeah, you were totally rebuilding yeah. your breeding. So you selected your favorite youngsters. All of them, all from the best couples. There's not one inside from the best couples, but they did very well. So these are from the sisters and brothers from the best couples. So it's the same family. So for sure, but in, in, the, in the other lofts, they are coming from also from the best pairs, as some of them. Eh? And again, uh, you guys use so much common sense. Mm -hmm. And you see all the pigeons are handling. That's that's the hand, the mother of uh, the one in the auction. The, the grizzle one. The, the darker grizzle? No, the light oh, grizzle. The, the, the light one, The light yeah. grizzle. That's from 2011. Oh yeah, you see the, you see the ring, yeah? yeah? Yeah, that's her. Tell me about this hen. It's still from the old looky look line. Eh? We keep them, that was, that was a breeding hen. Eh? She's not in the, in the team from China because she's from 2011. It cost 250 euro to send one bird to China. So maybe when she arrived in China, there are no eggs anymore. So it's, uh, hmm? but okay, that's a very nice hand. Still, uh, still on eggs. She has two eggs. Look at, look at you. You can just see a, a family here. Mm -hmm. All the pigeons look the same. Yeah. Uh, when you handle your pigeons here mm -hmm. and you describe them in your hands, what do you feel? Because I know, that I can see they, they're all cut with the same mm -hmm. scissors. <laughs> mm -hmm. well, of course, I'm, I'm a barber, so I cut always with the same You scissors. did my hair very well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 but well, you don't have to handle one. No, you don't have to. Let me have, I want, I want to check that. One moment. Here we go, guys. Bosman and Lincolns, you see, look at the beautiful sunlight coming through the windows. They can open it up for great <laughs> ventilation. You see the ceiling in the back, it's closed in. See, this is what, what we use uh, for, for breeding hens. This is Black Mama. This is a foundation hen. She's from 11. Do you want to take her outside? Yes, of course. But she don't lay eggs anymore. Eh? So okay. she has plastic eggs, but she's a partner now. For, she, and she feels very well eh, now. Eh? And she feels very happy. Eh? But this hen is the mother of Olympic Nina is the grandmother of first national Chateau, but she has a, a lot of good children. Eh? This is the foundation hen, and also the, uh, the grandmother of the first ace pigeon in the Pioneer Club, this black hen. If you see that eye, Actually, you know, you know what I'm gonna get you to do? Yeah. Turn her into the sun, and I see if I can, ah, you know what I gotta do, I gotta come. Look that eye. This is a fantastic eye. Now, now that we talk about a little bit about this, this mm -hmm. is a foundation breeder. Do you use eye sign for breeding? No, but I see this eye I like very much. This has something special for me. This is a special colored eyes and very intense and very, uh, how do you say, uh, very strong eye. I like rich, that. strong. Rich. In your hands, how do you describe the way she's put together this pigeon? This is 100% this is, uh, for me, yeah? I, she was always one of my favorites, and now she's uh, she's from 11, so, so she's 13 years old, and she still has muscles, she still has good bones, she's still very active. I think it's a it's a perfect bird, and that color is very special. It always comes back. Eh? This is the color from that panther color from uh, Theo Gilbert, eh? the black color, eh? and it's always come back by color. So we have a lot of good black birds eh? now eh? from this hen. She, she's not oversized at all? No, no, no. It's a, it's a normal, medium, small bird, not so big. But, uh, geez, still perfect. Eh? Still, still perfect, perfect. And, and you're still, you're using her of for course. the cocks. Yes, why and not? You, yeah. What, what can I, I, I don't kill a bird like that. You no, ne no, no, no. never kill uh, from our old birds. But what, what, what can they do? Sitting in the aviary and wait till they die. 
now they, at least they have a, a very yeah. happy life, eh? Yeah, they're, they're, and, they're, and you enjoy them. Of course. You see, look at right now here, you yeah. get the enjoyment to yeah. show this pigeon, and this, this is the best of the best yeah. from you. Yeah. It's the best, it was the best. She don't lay eggs anymore, but if you, like I told you, when I give her an egg, she starts breeding, and that's the most easy thing for a widowhood cock. The eight day, no eggs, we feel, we know for sure this hen don't lay eggs. We give her a plastic egg and she starts breeding and they are calm. And that's that's the way it should be, all together start breeding. Not fight anymore, not cup, how do you say? Pick on yeah, 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 push, 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 no, that, no. That, then, then it goes wrong. Eh? And, and, and these old hens, they understand it yeah. and yeah, they just no. bring the cocks yeah. right down. They actually age the cocks. Yeah, that's true. But a little, a little. Old, old, there's no young hen inside. Hey guys, that you are with uh, Dirk Leakins here, and uh, hey, I, I'm going to put the camera on hold, and I'm going to look at this hen. Hey guys, Ryan for this Leap Pigeon Auctions. I am here at the lofts of Bosman and Leakins. Now, I was I just handled this hen. Mm -hmm. She's what was she? Eleven? She's no from more. eleven. She's from eleven, so she's thirteen years old. Thirteen. And this is the base of the loft. Now, when you handle this pigeon. It's exactly like all your pigeons. Mm. They're not overly big. Mm. They're buoyant, very corky, mm. strong wings, mm. strong arms, but perfect in size. They feel like rockets. Mm -hmm. Now, you were telling me a story here. Yeah, that's 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 our best breeding hen. The, the children, direct children, one of them, her is uh, Olympic Nina. She's the same, just the same model, just the same like the mother. And uh, she was that time, and uh, she's from 2014 Olympic Nina and that time in 16 she was racing for Olympiada and she still needed one race. So racing for Olympiada, what does this mean? Uh, you have to go in two years, they have to do 11, uh, 11 races, the, the 11 best races, or, or, yeah, I think 11, uh, for all rounds and it's races from 100 till 700 kilometer long distance as well, the national races. So, what you need, you need so many from that, so many from that, so many from that, it's a combination, so it, they have to be in, in front in the 100, 100 kilometer, but also in front on 600 or 700 kilometer. Anyway, she, she needed just one race more, we didn't have anything anymore, she needed a race above 500 kilometer, and she never was uh, above 500. She was only 493 on Bush. She did, she competed, but she, we, we always keep her on the middle distance. I said to Mark, there's only one race left, and that's La Souterraine, 610 kilometer. And uh, I said, we must, we must give her something and we must do something uh, because she must be motivated to come for that 600 kilometer race. And it was a hard race, very hard race. I said, you know what we do? We give her an egg in the beginning of the week and she start breeding on that egg. She started sitting, yes? She start sitting. And the day of basketing, four days later, I gave her a small youngster. So she was only three, four days on the eggs and I gave her before basketing uh, at 12 o'clock uh, in the midday, I gave her a youngster. And she took the youngster and she started feeding that youngster. And she was very heavy on that youngster. Then I said to Mark, La Souterraine, it will be very hard for that bird. Eh? <laughs> I, remember, I, I never forget it. Eh? She came eh? and she fell down directly in that hole, you know where the, where the antenna was. Eh? Yeah. And she stayed sitting there for more than an half an hour. She was completely broke. She was there, she was, she was pure on character. She, she did that race and she won her last, the race she needed uh, for the points and she was Olympiade bird. That was her last race. She was sitting in half an hour like that. In the hole. Just in that hole, not going in, because she was she was so tired, but she was that was a race pure on the character. She wanted to go home. And I never forget that, eh? Because those birds are they want to go home. They give you everything. Yeah, to take the them. egg in the beginning of the week, yeah. then to accept the youngster, yeah. but you, you were just slowly tweaking yeah. the and horsepower into her, giving her more, more, more. She, she was in love with Mark, eh? Now look, that take was, a look at Mark. He's a good-looking guy. Yeah, but <laughs> he, when he called her, and she always come to him, yeah. uh, she was in love with Mark. But that, that's also why she took that egg and she took that youngster. And then, then just, but we were. I said, Mark, or, or we lose her, or she will come. Eh? And she won a very good prize on that race. But she was completely broken. And then she we went to, to, to the uh, breeding love, of course. Eh? That's the mama, black mama. Black mama. Eh? <laughs> 
Het is nog altijd schoon, hè. Hoe voelt u dat in de aan voelt, joh? But, yeah. No eggs anymore, hè? No, no. But we have some uh, hands from, from 2011. 11, hè? I told them already, eggs, yeah. yeah. With yeah. eggs. Yeah. So it's no problem, but... They, we did a lot of breeding from her, so they stopped a year before. Uh, I think we had the last ones in 21, were the last youngsters of her. She was, uh, that time, 10 years old. So super breeder. Yes, real top. And, and Nina, when she came back, mm. uh, after she came in, how, how spent was the body? Uh, it was not so, no, it was still looking good, but she was totally, she gave everything, you understand what I mean? Yeah. But day after it was okay, and she took the youngster, and she went to the youngster, and she <laughs> carrying around that youngster, and then we, we put her on the breeding loft, there was never a problem. Okay, so we've looked at roughly how you do the, 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 uh, the yearlings here and what your system is with the young pigeons. The young pigeons we let go, we let go, they do whatever they like. They stay together now and we go with first round, they go to the, to the Belgium races, you know, the, the 100 kilometer races or 150 and they go up and up and up. Then they go to Orleans, the, the car race, that's 430 kilometer. Uh, so they have to do everything. They go every week. And Have you ever won a car? We won a car. <laughs> of course, the fair. <laughs> you have. You're going to sell. She I know. Was well, first of 18,000, eh? and she was how many minutes lead, Mark? 12. 12 minutes lead on 18,000. 12 minutes lead. We thought it was she was escaped. <laughs> 12 minutes lead of 18,000. 18, yeah, and she won the car. Yeah. Yes. What was it? A Rolls Royce, a Porsche, no, a Bentley? Was, what was it? That, that, they, that time they have no money anymore, and so I have to change it and, and check in some money. Because it was Corona, she can, uh, they cannot do anything anymore. They didn't have the money anymore. <laughs> But we won, we won the title, you understand? Yeah. And we received the check. But that time it was a small car. But it's a car race, the, the derby they call it. That's the most important race in Limburg for young birds. So we won, that's the, the title, I think it's more important than any money. We never put one cent on the pigeons, never. You never, grab an, never, eh? always zero, always for the, the transport cost. But we never put any money on the pigeons, never, not one cent. Your, comp, your competitors must love that. You don't do it. Why? They know when, when, when we have the first prize, eh? the one after us has the money. Yeah. They know it, but it's no problem. I don't think it's a problem. Now, these youngsters here, they're going to come out, they're sitting out. H have you vaccinated them? They are vaccinated, yes. What do you vaccinate for? Against uh, adeno, co uh, coli, zeker, nee, hoe heet dat weer? Par Paramixo, circo en adeno. PCR? PCR? PCR. Rota. Rota. Okay, uh, will you treat them for canker, coxie, stuff like this? We, we give them a cure against cancer when they are a little bit older because they're coming from two different lofts, from my loft, from Mark's loft, and, uh, but we give them, most of the time, we give them the yellow drops over the food. So yellow drops on the food? On the food. What day of the week are you doing this? We do that two, three, two days, or two, three days, one time, and then every week one time, but then uh, when we started racing, we do it in the beak, yeah? We drop it in the beak. In the mouth? Yeah, yes. but before they go, now they have two, three days on the food, so they are clean. Okay. That's good. So When you put the yellow drops onto the feed, hmm? how much do you put on? Until it's yellow. <laughs> you just mix it until you see it <laughs> taking on? Yellow, yeah. It's 10, 10 ml, uh, one kilo. One, so yeah, 10 milliliters yeah. per 10 per kilos. Per kilo. Per per, kilo. Oh, per kilo, yeah, per yeah. kilo. Mm -hmm. Mix it in. When you mix it on, do you feed it right away or do you let it dry? A little dry. A little dry. A little bit dry. Yeah. Maybe let it sit a half hour, But 20 they minutes. Eat yeah. They eat it. It's no problem. Even in sweat, they eat it. Do you ever use yellow drops in the water? No, because no. They, are, they are completely yellow. Eh? I don't like that. You talked inside, we were speaking earlier, you like a lot of clean, clean water. Mm -hmm. Nothing in the water. Mm -hmm. Why is this? Yeah. Because when they eat, they have to drink. And then when you put something in the water, they don't drink. You know when you eat, you must drink or you... Yes. How do you say it? You get dry. How do yeah, you yeah, say yeah, yeah, yeah. You, yeah. You, know, you can't eat without drinking. You must drink. And you, I don't like to do something in the water because they put them out in and they take it out. I don't like it. They have, they eat good and they drink good and then they train good. It's very simple. Yeah. 
<coughs> why you put so, they okay when they come back from the race there was all there's always electrolyte hype in the water or belgasol it's the same eh, for me but there must be something in the water uh, to to recover and so they don't drink too much but sometimes when it's very hot they come and they drink to death eh? you know yes. we yeah. had that once eh? mm -hmm. they drunk her dead eh? she mm -hmm. was dead on the floor eh? mm -hmm. because like Fill up. the water uh, and when there's something in the water they don't drink so much when the birds return from a race will you use warm water or cold water in the drinker no that's that normal tap water normal tap tap no, water just, it's not so cold eh? that don't, don't need to be so cold no why and uh, for both the the uh, yearlings or the old birds and the young birds how often will you bathe them Ba ba a bath, a bath. Yeah, bath. Every every weekend now. Eh? Yes, every every Sunday. When he come Saturday, he come back from the race, and every Sunday he take a bath. So once a week on the Sunday. Mm -hmm. Never twice a week. No, 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 not necessary. They don't do that. Sometimes uh, then you have, they got Saturday not in the bath, then uh, we take Sunday. Okay. okay. Anything in the bath water? Just clear water. Acid, some acid. Some uh, acid. A vinegar, a vinegar, eh? Okay. Vi just vinegar. Yeah. This is yeah. it. Just vinegar for the lice, maybe. I, I, and they don't drink it so much then. Then they don't start drinking the bath water. When there's some vinegar inside, they, when they are used to drink uh, clear water, is that a bird from us, Mark? Yeah. A witte, completely white one. <laughs> I think somebody's marrying here. <laughs> the ganse witte. And these youngsters here, how long will you leave them out today? One hour. This one is a second round, eh? mm -hmm. but and they're going to the first round also. Eh? They uh, they go, will go together to the first races. To train Need today, uh, 40 minutes. 40 minutes, the yeah. first round, yeah. the first round. Eh? And and you darken the youngsters? Not now. We start in two weeks. So they're just on regular light. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. So you let the first round out by themselves. Mm -hmm. Let them do their exercise. Bring them in. Mm -hmm. Then the next round comes out. They get an hour, and they're starting to go a little bit. You see, they want to play. Mm -hmm. You're going to start darkening next week. First of April. First of April. Everybody goes into the dark. So everyone goes in the dark. How long will you leave them in the dark for? How many weeks? Till the longest day. Till the longest day. Mm -hmm. And how long is your darkening? Is it? At six o'clock in the evening and about uh, eight o'clock in the morning. Then we finished. So you open them up. When you open them up yeah. in the morning, uh, do you let them out right away? Do you give them a half hour to get their eyes adjusted? A half an hour later. Half hour. Okay, do you feed them before you let them out? Uh, sometimes a little bit. Why? When you have hungry, then you see that they don't fly good. Then give a little bit of, of feed. Okay, a little bit of feed. You let them out for their hour. They train, they exercise, they, they come down. Yeah. You come in, you give them another feeding? Yes. Okay, so you've, you've given them a little bit, then you give them a little bit more. What about in the evening time before you darken? Uh, well, we give them in the morning uh, 15 grams, and in the evening also 15 grams. And the last time we feed is about four or five o'clock. Uh, PM. Okay, and last time we feed them. you say 15 grams, 15 grams per pigeon? Yeah. Do you, do you weigh it? Yes. Really? Yes. <laughs> this is, we're getting good stuff here. So you, you so you say there's... This, this is also, when, when he take on the bell, they come, no, inside. Really? Yeah. Now when will you be bringing these guys in? How long? Till these guys come in? Now, you mean? Yeah. Is he bringing them in now? Uh, yeah, will or we can wait 15 minutes, no, it doesn't matter. No, no. You can bring them in if you like. Yeah. You can you can film it. But these are youngsters, eh? so maybe they don't listen. Uh, they're a little slow. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But you can try them. Eh? They go in. You kept the bell. You the bell. You the So I don't have it. We we also say the bell. You don't yeah. call them in. No, always with the bell. Why? Because why a bell and not calling them? It's always the same, eh? When he calls them in, it's another voice. My voice is different. And he's all week here, and when he's, when he's not here, I can also call them in, because it's the same, always the same. And even when they come back uh, from the race, you're excited, you call harder, you whistle harder, something There's like that. There's more emotion in it. It's always, but you must give them some food, eh? so... Uh, <laughs> and, they, and they will, when you get them in here, can they, they come only through the chute or through the window? How is this? There they come. Oh yeah, here's the bell. Yeah. Mm 
these are the, the very young ones. You see, they are not used to it. Not, they, they were, ten days ago, they are weaned. Moet je wel die defensor toe doen, hè? En niet te veel rammelen in de meer, want ik heb alleen, hè? Die doen alleen met de bal, hè? We got the laughs of Bosman. He do a little bit Lincoln. like this also. With, uh, okay. Who, he wiggles a bit, but I don't like it when he wiggles. He's I see it down Rego's place, his mother, come, 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 come. I don't like it. You don't like it? No. I told Dan, Dan, you only use the, the bell. Maybe he's going to do it as well. <laughs> now with these young pigeons, mm. some people will say that watch, oh, they're on the top of the roof. Mm. Oh, they're on the ground. Oh, they're this, oh, they're that. These are young. So they need to learn. No problem. Eh? It's like children, eh? They're always playing around, they're children, eh? When you were younger, you were always on the grass and uh, playing football and outside, and that's normal, eh? But they have to learn that, eh? You see, they already know it, eh? Because they, they even don't fly around, and they, they know how to go in with that bell. And all one hole, eh? Nothing more, and then that. Eh? Also, that loved one hole, eh? And you can see that they're starting to understand it. Mm -hmm. They know. When, when they go inside, there's, there's food, eh? You learn that from the day on, eh? Day one, you learn that. When you feed them, you go with the bell. The bell is always inside. When he's feeding the birds, always with the bell. Bell's always on. Bell, food. And you know, I think you said something very good. I know there's these pigeon whistles and they're high pitched and you can blow them and I can hear them uh, four miles away. Mm -hmm. It's not good if you have neighbors. That's the, that's the most important thing. You, you must respect your neighbors or they don't respect you anymore. Eh? And they will uh, go uh, and ask, uh, they go to the police sometimes. And they say, yeah. they, they, we're getting crazier eh, from that. And then they start bullying you around. They uh, put the wash outside on Saturday. Or something. If we ask our neighbors eh, now, eh, uh, the birds are coming, is it a problem to stop uh, doing the grass, the metal grass machine? He stops, yeah. he knows it, it's no problem. And at the end of the season, eh, we always ask the neighbor, eh, come on, we go to the restaurant together and it's on us with your wife and we have a pleasant evening, we pay everything just to... to for say, say thank you. Thank you. For being a good human. Yeah. Yeah. For being a good neighbor. Yeah, good, yeah, good people. Yeah. But I think it's very... This here, we could listen to this. Mm -hmm. I could literally sit outside with you, mm -hmm. have a dinner. You could have that doorbell going mm -hmm. all day. It doesn't yeah. drive you nuts. No. It's very calm. But they still have to learn this one. If you see first round, eh, I, think, uh, I think it's about uh, 10, 15 seconds or 20 seconds they are all in. Eh? They, are, they have still Well, have well you know what I'm going to have to do? I'm going to have to come back. Mm -hmm. I have to come back tomorrow to watch the, the first round out. No, yeah, yeah, we can do that. <laughs> but I, I, I find here with you guys, uh, you guys are like your pigeons. You're very calm. Mm -hmm. there's, no, uh, there's no anger around here. There's no high pressure stress. You feel, yeah, I feel very that, calm. I feel it at night. <laughs> at I, night? I wake up a lot of times in the night. Eh? Do you really? About thinking about the birds, thinking about systems. Uh, not that I'm stressed at night, but I, sometimes I wake up in the night and I go uh, out of my bed and I write it down, what, I, what I'm thinking. <laughs> you have to write it down directly. <laughs> now, I have another question for you. Uh, selecting for breeders. When you're going to bring a bird in, or or you're, uh, what makes you select certain pigeons, Dirk? When we bought that Olympic triple, that famous bird, that's in our birds every and every bird is Olympic triple. Uh, I bred 32 youngsters from him. We raised only the six sisters, eight sisters there were, mm -hmm. but uh, two, one get away and one was sold. That was the last one. But the six ones, those were six sisters. That was already a good thing, but we also have uh, totally 32. And what we do, did we do? We put those 32 all in the breeding loft and we put 32 children from Lucky Luke against them. So brothers and sisters against brothers and sisters, two families together. And that was boom. That was the best. You know directly if those lines go together because we won directly the first national out of these lines. So those lines, if you go and you say, okay, I'm going to buy a bird, uh, a direct child of the cannibal van Dijk van Dijk, we had two, 
we put all those youngsters against the ones from Pros Rosen. You know, those mm -hmm. two lines, line, line, bam, mixture, new blood against each other. But how, with one bird, you cannot test it. But if you have 10 brothers and sisters, you get the 10 pairs, those are 20, 40, three rounds, 60 youngsters, then you know for sure, oh, this is good, these lines together. Or maybe it's better, the Olympic triple against Cannibal. But the, the most important thing that was with Olympic triple, it fits on every of these families. It was very good. And you were able to, you were able to see it, and, yeah. and then it was just yeah. lightning in a bottle. Now, Lucky Luke, what about this? What about these grizzles? These grizzles. They're say, I'm gonna say they're beautiful. My, that lucky look was from my uncle, and my wife's uncle, Luke Liebens, and uh, he won first. Uh, he won the car, you know, with that bird. Okay. It was the most important race for the young birds. And then as a yearling, he won again on Bush first prize and a few short distance races. So he was very good that bird. Eh? And I said to to Luke, it was a grizzle one, fantastic, beautiful bird. I said, look, do you want to sell it? He said, okay. What do you want to give? I said, I gave him a price. He said, it's okay, I want to sell it. And for him, that was not so important. He had the money and he sold that bird. Uh, but afterwards, if it, if it was stayed and look in my uncle's uh, uh, place, it was never a, f a famous bird, eh? because he was just a normal racer, but he was a good racer and he had, and we, saw, we, we bought that bird and it became one of our best breeders ever. And it's from Schellens, Karel Schellens, a lot of inside by Louis de Luz. And Paul Same is also inside. Paul Same is a very old name here in Belgium, but it's from the real basic breeding uh, birds in Belgium. Karel Schellens, Wiske, Louis de Luz, Verreut, uh, Paul Same is the grizzle from Paul Same. That they, those are very important lines. And these bloodlines are still still here because the grizzle color, if I have a grizzle bird, is always from Lucky Look. Because once from a grizzle you have blue ones, you never get a grizzle out of it anymore. The grizzle color follows the line. Black one, not. Black is very dominant. So if you have a black bird and you, you take out a blue bird, the grandchild can be again black. But it will never be with grizzle. So you have to be very careful to keep that line. Eh? It goes with the color. It goes with the color, the bloodline. So it's a good little, uh, a little cheat. Yeah. It's a nice little cheat. I will never buy another grizzle. Never. Oh, why is this? Because I, then I'm not sure anymore that it's from our grizzle line. Ah. So uh, when there's a grizzle, oh, I always have to look, uh, is it coming from Lucky Look or from another grizzle? Uh, maybe from the other grizzle. Eh? But I want to keep that grizzle line. And you have no problems with colored pigeons, grizzles, reds? No. Pigeon is a pigeon. Good pigeons are good pigeons. All the rest is bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> All the rest is bullshit. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Dirk, I want to thank you for taking the time for showing us this. Mm. Uh, again, uh, great job with everything yeah. you do in the pigeon sport. Uh, I think you're the, one of the best auctioneers I ever seen. Thank you. You bring the crowd right up. Yeah. Uh, and you, you keep it, I've never seen a guy keep something in, so interesting for five or six hours. Mm -hmm. You just keep going. Uh, if you guys ever get a chance to see this man in action, don't retire yet. Come and see him. Uh, he does a great, he's a great auctioneer. But good luck this year with your season. Thank you. Uh, you guys are fantastic. Thank you for giving Feathers Elite the opportunity to visit your, your lofts here and, and do a small auction. Yeah. Uh, we only have two. Huh? We, we, we only have a few birds last year. We could not give, bring more. I said, uh, okay, yes. two, not more. Two, not more. And we that's okay. We, we took out of the breeding loft, huh? this, this pair. Huh? And yes, <laughs> listen, they're a fantastic pair. They're, way, they're the way you would pair them up. Mm -hmm. You've got the grizzles in there. Mm -hmm. You've got it all. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Please, and now we've finished your pie. Huh? You still have to, uh, there are we'll four, cut it in four left for you. Huh? He will eat them all, for sure. Hey guys, Ryan, Feathers Elite Pigeon Auctions. We hope you enjoyed that amazing loft tour. Please, reminder to like, share, and subscribe. Follow us on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. Until the next loft tour, thanks for flying with me. Bye for now.